Hello, I'm Alistair MacLeod and I'm in Madrid on behalf of the Gold Money Foundation. And with me, I have one Ramon Rayo, who is one of the leading Austrian school econom economists in, in Spain. Welcome. Hello. Um, tell me, is uh, interest in the Austrian school of economic theory growing in Spain or how do you see it? Yeah, I think it is growing especially in, not in the academia because, well, we know that the academia is uh, is closed and it's uh, not uh, willing to accept uh, ideas who don't fit in their uh, framework, in their established framework. But from a social point of view, I think many people who is approaching to economics, who wants to understand uh, how the economy is going, how the business cycle is developing, uh, tries to, 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 to take the Austrian framework in order to, to understand it. Furthermore, not only uh, common people, but also businessmen who, businessmen who are interested in, in foreseeing what will happen in the economy and that uh, have realized that the real alternative is Austrian economics because it's the, the only uh, school that provides a theory of boom and bust uh, related to uh, monetary phenomena. Yeah, I mean, it, it does seem to me that the great flaw in Keynesian economics is that uh, they can actually get an economy going by injecting money into it, whereas that is an old fallacy. No, no, not only money, but expenditure in general. Um, yeah, general uh, Keynesian economics assumes that uh, demand leads supply. So uh, if you stabilize uh, your, your level of expenditure, whatever it is, whatever it is form of, uh, whatever it is its composition, you can achieve grow, you can achieve an economy uh, going, you can make an economy going. Uh, but this is obviously uh, totally wrong. I mean, if you have a structure of production which is totally distorted, which uh, makes no sense, which uh, has a lot of houses, a lot of uh, construction capacity, but on the other hand, you have a completely lack of raw materials, for example, obviously, if you spend more money, you are not solving the internal problems of the, of the supply, of the structure of production. So, Austrian economics uh, realizes and establishes what says uh, say that supply equals demand. Not that as uh, Keynes misunderstood say that uh, supply creates its own demand. That's something that Keynes never said. Uh, uh, that say never said. Um, so if you have a, a, a flawed supply, you also have a flawed demand. Mm. which is what we are now seeing. I mean, when, when Keynesians say that we have a problem of demand, it's true, but it's a problem of demand because we have a problem of, of supply. You cannot solve supply from demand because uh, the, the structure of production, the structure of capital is so heterogeneous, it's so uh, it's much specific, you cannot put a... a I don't know, uh, a sofa in order to produce uh, oil. Uh, so if you have invested a lot in producing houses, you cannot use that production capacity to produce more oil. You have to uh, save in order to create new capital goods, in order to, um, to abandon old uh, bad investments. So uh, just by printing money, just by uh, issuing debt by the government, you cannot solve a problem which is more structural, which is which comes from the division the, the, that labor has been divided in a wrong way. Um, you touched on uh, the boom conditions which have particularly affected Spain. Um, how is that unwinding at the moment? Is I mean, it's obviously a painful process, but presumably there's a lot more unwinding of that to occur. Yes, especially uh, if you take a, a look to, uh, to, for example, United States, you can see that much of the adjustment in the 
uh, housing sector has been done. Why? Because prices had uh, fall a lot. They had have adjusted to more or less uh, their fundamentals. But when you see Spain, of course, there are many other problems in the United States, but at least the sector that started the, the crisis more or less has been uh, adjusted. Problem is that the state has grown, has uh, increased spending a lot. So you have now a, a public and, and uh, state problem in the in the economy. A uh, too much, a uh, too big state who is spending too much and who cannot finance uh, their too huge expenditures without monetizing debt, basically. Yeah. But in Spain, the adjustment in the real sector in part has been done obviously because when you have 5 million unemployed people you cannot say that uh, there has, hasn't been an, a, a huge destruction of uh, production structures but in the case of the housing sector prices has have not fallen as much as they uh, should not even a half probably of what they should many of the enterprises who build houses are still in the business, not because they can pay, but because the banks try to lend them money so that their illiquidity don't turn into a, a, a bankruptcy. But that doesn't solve the problem. That uh, puts the, the, the problem forward. So if to this situation, which is very complicated because it has been here for, for four years at least, you add that the rest of the economy cannot create more, more wealth, more business plans which are, which are affordable, which, are, uh, which can be financed uh, and profitable because you have a very rigid, a very inflexible labor market uh, uh, an energy market which is each time more expensive because government is subsidizing renewable energies which are uh, a crazy thing if you add to this to this framework of the economy which is very complicated and a state which has the same problems than that of the united states but without the printing press uh, then you have the current situation because government cannot print money so private savers see how is the economy how is the the whole society so, so how can how can you hmm. repay a debt if your economy is falling and your debt is increasing absolutely um and from what you say that the, the process has hardly started and uh, presumably it's very difficult for the politicians, not only in Spain, but elsewhere in Europe, to accept that um, we're now in a sort of period of overall money contraction in terms of bank credit because the banks naturally have become more cautious. They want to maybe defer um, the bankruptcies, say, in the construction center, as you, sector, as you described. Um, but it's a process, this, this sort of stopping this, the banks from contracting their credit is a very difficult thing for, to, to, you know, to control and manage, I would it's, think. It's an impossible process. I mean, uh, the, the problem is not only that uh, banks don't want to, to, to lend, it's also that people, private people, in general, of course mm. you have exceptions, but uh, as an aggregate, if we want to think in aggregate terms, don't want to borrow because they have reached a point of debt saturation. They are so much indebted that they don't want more debts because they cannot even pay current debts. It's nonsensical that they assume more debts. So we are in a process of private deliberating because all agents, families, enterprises, even banks want to reduce their debts. What happens? Governments don't want to assume this because this obviously is painful. You have to to go through a process uh, where well, demand, aggregate demand was composed by future goods, by credit. So if not only the level of credit expansion uh, reduces, but in fact goes back during a time, you have a contraction of demand 
and then a need a, a, a necessity for restructuring the, the structure of production from for readjusting the, the structure of production and that is painful that is unpopular so governments want to stab stabilize as Keynes said aggregate demand and how they do well if private people don't want to get indebted they go indebted by other people so they issue debt and they monetize debt during a time well especially if your currency is an international reserve like the united states that may not had have bad consequences or at least bad consequences that you can see uh, for instance inflation you cannot see a huge inflation even uh, when they are printing huge quantities but in fact by printing money you are uh, destroying capital you are destroying savings and you are uh, delaying the adjustment process so uh, society is getting poor it is more indebted mm. they want people want to be less indebted but governments make them more indebted they yeah. they uh, borrow money uh, faster than people private people repay debts and of course printing money destroys savings and you cannot have a sustainable economic growth without the savings of course to um, provide the investment for free enterprise to and the entrepreneurs to get going again